What would you look at that? What's up guys? It is about 8.30 at night. And uh, yeah, it's about 8.30 at night and we're gonna go for a little drive. I'm gonna show you guys something my car has been doing lately and I need to get down to the bottom of it and uh, try and fix the issue. It seems to be kind of sputtering, cutting out around 3,500, 4,000 RPM and all the way up until red line. We are getting the right boost. We're hitting about 15 or so PSI, so I don't think it's a boost issue but it may be a dirty MAF sensor, but we're gonna figure this out hopefully tonight. Maybe some of you guys out there have had similar issues and you know how to fix it or what resolved your issue. I'd be curious to hear about your story down below in the comments. I'm hoping I could figure out this issue on my car tonight, so stay tuned and find out. acting pretty normal of course when I'm trying to record what's going on it's not actually doing what I'm talking about apologize for the one-handed filming lowering well the car's running strong right now at this moment but let me tell you uh, that was not the case you know earlier this week 15 is the peak boost of where this stage 2 map is supposed to be at, so we're happy there. Air fuel ratio is about 14.5 at idle, and it drops down to about 11 at wide open throttle. So as far as I know, as far as my knowledge goes, that seems normal. I don't know, from the research that I've done, that's those are pretty normal numbers. I do have a couple clips from when it was acting up pretty bad that I've recorded previously. So we're gonna go on ahead and show those clips now. jerkiness going on but nothing like it was doing I mean it was really breaking up bad and uh, I had no check engine lights so I don't think it's gonna be a misfiring issue um, I've been through that as you guys know um, yeah I don't know what's happening it's a little breaking up a tiny bit but not enough to even tell on camera I'm sure I'm curious to see how dirty my math sensor is and I do have some math sensor cleaner at home so I was gonna go clean it off real quick and maybe the problem will be hundred percent gone I guess you guys got some good boosts and turbo noises, so I mean, we can't go wrong with that, right? All right, let's check out that mass sensor and uh, see how dirty that thing is. I'm hoping it's gonna be pretty dirty because that would be an easy fix, hopefully. Hopey, hopey, hoping, hoping. It's a hopeful night tonight, hopeful. Math sensor is gonna be in the box here. This is my Cobb SF intake and air box. And yeah, math sensor is gonna be hiding right in there. Time to dig her out. I gotta be honest, I haven't beat the hell out of my car like that in a long time. I'm glad the old girl held up and we didn't have any more catastrophes out there. But let's check out what's under the air box. It's probably gonna be filthy. I have not been in here for a good minute now. So that may explain my dirty math sensor and some of the issues that are happening right now. Couple Allen heads and uh, we'll have her out here. 
Moving up in the world, I got myself a nice toolbox now. Early Christmas present for me. Pretty excited about it. Now if I can only find the right size. I need to up my Allen game. My Allen head variety here. It's pretty weak. That could have been bad. Damn it. Too big. Come on, baby. One of these has got to be the size. My application called for an eighth. I know it's gonna it's a metric size, but an eighth uh, Allen head did work. I believe these are aftermarket little bolts, so that's why yours may be different. My Cerakoted nice little plastic trim piece is still looking beautiful. It's a little dirty, but you just wipe it off and it's still looking like new. Cerakote is some good stuff. These little tiny guys here are holding in my math sensor. Got two of those. I mean, look at this filter. This thing has seen better days. It's pretty much like neglect around here. But let's go ahead and pull this baby out. Carefully, this thing's like a couple hundred bucks, I believe, and you do not want to damage it. So let's get this thing unclicked and take a closer look. Just want to push down on this tab and pull back, and it should come right off. Just be careful when you're doing it, because old plastic can snap, and you don't want to be that guy. Okay, there she is all unclipped. Take a closer look here. You can't really see the sensor inside of it. You can really only see that piece there to the left. AutoZone, Amazon, you can pretty much get this stuff anywhere these days. Let's give it a try and get this thing cleaned out and go for another test drive. Hopefully we see some improvements. All right, so we're literally just gonna give this thing a spray right into the math sensor, into the connectors, into the holes. Just try not to make contact with the straw and you should be safe. So let's do it. just soaked everything <laughs> and you definitely don't want to use brake cleaner or carb cleaner or anything like that this stuff is like formulated for mass airflow sensors so I don't think you can risk messing anything up well at least I hope you can't I'd be the one to do it so we just gave it a nice squirt here and uh, we're gonna let it dry thoroughly okay so that's pretty much it I've used this stuff in the past it's been a long time but it's pretty much all I do okay just throwing in the math sensor now Got her all cleaned up, she's all dry, good to go. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's any smoother, we gotta do some more tests. No noticeable difference quite yet. Hopefully that'll change. <laughs> I'm yep, still there. Still some hesitation going on. But yeah, the problem is still present and we need to figure it out. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? Well, we got kind of a random video for you. Um, I'm in the garage, it's late at night Saturday, just uh, hanging out and I do have a couple parts here that I ordered from my car. Uh, nothing really special, just something that my car needs. Uh, my old lines are a little crusty, a little brittle, and some of them just straight up snapped off. So I do have some replacement like PCV slash EVAP lines I need to replace. So I'm going to be doing that tonight. All my factory hoses are a little cattywampus to say the least. Okay, right here, this one kind of comes around. Everything's just kind of janky. That's the word, janky. We've got this little nipple that taps into the intake manifold you can see i don't have the proper hose on there i have a couple hose clamps and you can just hear the vacuum when the car is running so it's definitely not ideal and my car is kind of doing a little bit of sputtering like under boost so i'm not sure if that has anything to do with it but uh it's definitely not running smoothly and it's a little rough under boost so all right well oh don't follow me there hood that was a little scary okay so i just kind of took off this line here this is the ghetto piece that I have going to the nipple off the intake here. So we're going to get that out of the way. Basically just going to pull off everything that we did on my last video. And just get everything resituated. So I decided to put you guys on my head so you guys can get a better look at what I'm actually doing here. This goes to the manifold. Another thing that I'm kind of worried about is this little tap right here to the intake manifold. Check it out. It's loose. And that tells me that there may be a boost leak there. Because if that's not sealed up, then air is getting sucked in there. And that's just bad news for Subarus or any car in general, I'm sure. So basically, we're going to screw with this later. Uh, hope this doesn't screw us later. <laughs> ha! 
so we're gonna just continue to dig out our little combination here of hoses so let me go on ahead and pull this off oh I guess that'll come off that's part of the T I'll just get that out of there all right we're just gonna remove this hose from the intake from the turbo inlet that is I'm gonna get it out of the way so we can access this bolt a little easier looks like a 12 millimeter so I'm gonna set that aside flap this down and bring in our little swivel ratchet here it's always a pitta it's definitely tough to get back in taking it out is okay I'm gonna do a little trick I'm gonna show you guys a little trick a little trick of the trade here so we take a little bit of paper towel shove it in there a little shove her on Make sure she's lined up. There we go. Untwist her out. And we can retain our bolt with a cool little paper towel trick. Easiest trick in the book. Okay, so I'm basically just going to remove the blue tee here. That way I can get this part out. And I'll fiddle fart with it in my hand. And decide on where everything goes. Let's unplug our little valve here. Solenoid, whatever that is. Forget what it is rip to my clip because it doesn't click there we are part number 22310AC241 again I'll have this linked in the description below so basically this T fitting here is supposed to kind of look similar but it doesn't because it's old and brittle and shitty <coughs> let's go on ahead and figure this out here so so this little assortment here um, is going to be replacing pretty much this part here all right, so we're just going to pop this one off here. Hopefully, pop it off and not break it off gently. Here we go. Okay, nothing broke off. We're in the clear. So this piece is going to be directly replaced right here. And it should fit snug enough where you don't need any hose clamps or you don't need any zip ties. It's a brand new hose. Ooh, it's a tight fit. Why is it such a tight fit, I say? Look at that, what the hell? Did it really stretch out over the years? It's a pretty wild difference there. Uh, don't tell nobody. A little spit never hurt anybody. Yeah. There we go, perfect. I like a glove. I can figure this one out later. I'm gonna have to cut this one to length. This isn't factory as you guys can tell. So, I know that one definitely goes there. So now we just kinda have to I guess squeeze it all together and somehow make it work ah <sighs> well I'm gonna attempt to try to get this old piece off here um, I could feel where it ends it hooks up to the hard line on the fuel rail I believe it's just a vent line it's just a breather vent line so there's not gonna be any fuel that comes out of there it's kind of far on there I'm not really sure let me try my 90 degree pliers and see if I have any luck Hope it's worth getting it off. Let's try the straight needle nose. There we go. Okay, looks pretty promising. We can get the new one on there. Shouldn't be too bad. Well, if need be, I can always kind of rotate um, some of these fittings to make it work. So we're just gonna go for it and get this elbow on, kind of in the same orientation that it, I took it off. Um, it kind of, you know, bent downward. So I'm just gonna go with that. Just a little bit of a. Uh, your favorite lube? Um, I have to bring in the big guns and use a little bit of WD-40 here. Just a little squirt. Just to kind of make my life easier. I'm going to take this one off, that way I don't break it. It's a little brittle. Okay. Got it started. Now, I just want to make sure that I get it on all the way. I think that's on pretty good. I'm kind of happy about that. Alright, time to deal with this other part here. I think my light's going to die any time now getting a little weak on me. So that's gonna go into there. This one's gonna go into here. Bing, bang, boom. Now, our little elbow here is gonna be replaced with this one. This little piece here is gonna go into the blue T down there. So, let's get this little elbow off here just gently. Okay, there we go. So that's off. That's pretty much old stuff. New one's gonna go on like that. I'm actually gonna 
carefully get this one off because we're not going to be reusing this hose. We have the brand new one sitting over here on the bench. Get this baby off gently. Just work her off. There we go. I'm going to grab the new hose that goes onto the intake. I mean, you really could use any old hose. But I just went with OEM because they got, you know, the factory bends and whatnot. And it should look pretty clean. I mean, as clean as it can get with this bogus whatever evap emission stuff that I'm dealing with. Go ahead and get this janky old uh, hose off of here. And these hose clamps loosened. I despise the flatheads. I literally uh, tighten these down as tight as they go. Just to prevent any leaks, but... There's no way I was going to prevent that with how big this hose is and how small this nipple is. It's like a hot dog through a hallway right there. It's just, it just ain't going to be good. Alright, where's my new piece? I'm already losing my marbles here. Lose my marbles. Forgot where I put the new piece. Where's the last new piece at, Essie? This new piece should fit so snug that you don't even need a hose clamp. But, with my case here, we have this freaking port that's... Okay, I was able to push it in a little bit, but who knows if that's going to be airtight. Oh, well... Only one way to find out. Just a little bit of WD for the sole. Okay, nice and tight. Our little nipply nipple nip nip is gonna go here. All of our nipples are gonna have hoses, hopefully, by the time we're all done here. So this is before I'm gonna mount up this little solenoid valve here. Very well a big cluster of tubes here, and it's never fun to get right. So I got all the nice tubes in their area, in their place. I believe I can get the bracket to go in place and line up with the hole. You need it on a certain angle. Man, it's not fun. You gotta like force the hoses to go your way and they want to constantly spring back the opposite way that you need to go. It's so simple yet so hard at the same time. But hopefully we can get this uh, bolt started and uh, we'll be one step closer to getting this done. Let's go ahead and tighten this up a little more. Double check everything's connected. Everything looks pretty good to me. Might as well get this baby in place here. Put this baby back here. This big old hose is going to go here, over to the intercooler. All our hoses <laughs> still look connected. Last piece is going to be over here. Not too bad. Alright, so next morning we're setting out to uh, go on our first test drive. Just got to make sure I plug in my little solenoid here. Tuck the plug back behind the alternator to get it out of the way. But as far as all the other tubes, hoses, nipples, everything is connected and looking good. Boom. No check engine lights for me. Boom. Put that baby back on there. We're all connected. That's on. Everything's good. I know I got to put the air box and all that. Alternator shroud. All that has to go back on. But we're going for a test drive. So wish me luck. direct I think after I got that nipple off the intake manifold a little tighter and the, the, the hose actually you know mounts up a little better so I don't think it's letting in any air and everything should be nice and uh, airtight so that's nice right on sounds good take it easy man I've only hit 15 pounds of boost, which is perfect. We're right on schedule for that. And I think it actually feels more alive. <laughs> I guess that little nipple on the intake manifold has been leaking for a while because I haven't had this good of a response in a long time. So it's safe to say that that little nipple, I think it was the cause of all my hesitation and stuff. I was troubleshooting the whole hesitation problem, um, as you guys saw in the beginning of the video. But it, I seem to have maybe, uh, fix the problem okay dick it's gonna cut me off huh all right I see how it is yeah we definitely got our boost back I'm really excited about this 
So glad it was worth the hassle to get all the OEM factory pieces and waiting a month to get that certain one from Subaru. Sure am glad it's over with now and we can move on to other stuff on the Subaru and uh, yeah, just move on to bigger and better things, hopefully. So that's gonna do it for this troubleshooting episode on uh, my Subaru. Hopefully we don't have any more um, to come. I'm sure we will, cause Subaru. But uh, other than that, thanks again for checking out the video again. Coming along with me on this journey on troubleshooting what the hell's going on with my car. Glad we finally figured it out. Hopefully you guys can use this video to help you out on your troubleshooting journeys. So I uh, will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for clicking, subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff. You know it helps. So uh, yeah, take it easy guys. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Yeah. Oh, I forgot how fun it is driving this car when it actually works right. Man, it's fun. <laughs> I think I need some oil, to be honest.